All right, greetings, brothers and sisters, part two. That was a short part there. I had to take care of something. All right, now, hope you can see me because the camera is slightly angled down. Uh, today, with money as the measure of all things, the billionaire oligarchs, a slithering nest of narcissists, sociopaths and psychopaths, are our gods, our ultimate source of law, owning politicians as they do through their Supreme Court-allowed campaign contributions. Meeting in Davos every January, these billionaire oligarchs have anointed communist red Chinese leader Z, I guess, XI, as the leader of their globalist new world order. Why Z? Because red China comes closest to meeting the new world order model. No individual rights. Individuals are expendable collectivists. Human resources. The state is God. That's what Hegel said. God walking on earth and coordinates with the military and state owned and run corporations to exploit natural and human resources with the technocrats running the machinery let me just put my phone on silent mode here okay um this is the 0.01 percent oligarchs methodology and communism is always 0.1 percent elitist run all right let's see what else we got um Hmm. Legendary U.S. gunmaker Remington to file for bankruptcy. That's interesting. Swiss bank fraudster likely to spend only a little over a year in jail. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it interesting that Bernanke and Timothy Geithner and Paulson and these crooks, okay, that advocated back in 2009, or was it, yeah, 2009, I believe, the 750 or $60 billion bailout, that threatened martial law if they didn't get it. Not one of them spent a day in jail, okay? You understand the corruption that's taken place in Washington, D.C.? Okay? These are the people that run the country. Or maybe they're just the puppets. There is a global elite behind them. These are the front men. Okay? They take the fall if something goes wrong. But they answer to somebody higher than them, just like the president. All the presidents going back to at least Wilson, have been nothing but puppets, all right? And speaking about Woodrow Wilson, okay? The progressive, a scoundrel who sold our country down the drain, or helped sell our country down the drain. Um, now, United States is in Syria illegally, an article by Cyril Hedge. other articles US war with Iran is next defense secretary James Mattis assured military service members who had been brought to the United States illegally as children that they will not face deportation even if legal protections under the deferred action for childhood arrivals that's DACA program expires Trump targets invading migrants on welfare uh, the cost to U.S. taxpayers of illegal immigration. All right, there's an article at uh, GatesStoneInstitute.org. At the federal, state, and local levels, taxpayers shell out approximately $134.9 billion to cover the costs incurred by the presence of more than 12.5 million illegal aliens and about 4.2 million citizens, children of illegal aliens. So, so writes Matt O'Brien and Spencer Really? Now, I don't know what you think about Ill illegal immigration, but the bottom line is we are not open borders for all the world to come in and live off the government, okay? At the taxpayer's expense. That's not the way America was set up. Immigration, yes. We're a nation of immigrants. There's no question about that. But what, kind, what quality of uh, immigrants are we getting today? If they're so interested in helping themselves, let them stay in their own countries and help themselves. Do something for their own countries. What's happening is we're getting the scoundrels and, and, and the, uh, uh, the, the bad kind of people, a lot of them come here, and they're not all that intelligent. Some of them have criminal records. Some of them have, have actually killed Americans, okay? You know, and, and instead of being deported back to where they came, they're allowed to stay here and gain citizenship, get on, you know, get a social security number, get on welfare and food stamps. All right. I don't see how that's productive of, of progress at all. Um, and you might disagree. Uh, write to me if you do. 
But listen to some of Michael Savage's comments on that in his, in his book, Trump's War. And, and certainly I'm not defending everything Trump stands for, don't get me wrong. Uh, I didn't vote for the man, but I, I think he's better than Hillary or Bernie Sanders, who basically are socialist communists. At least, at least Trump is a, is a businessman. And maybe not the best businessman. He believes in free enterprise, but you know he's probably made a few deals with the devil. You don't become a billionaire without making a few deals with the devil, I don't think. Um, okay, other articles. George Soros and his fellow elite revolutionaries are plotting to bring down the UK government. Billionaire Zionist revolutionary... Revolutionary oligarch George Soros is said to be behind the protest against the invading African migrants being deported from Israel. The result of 25 years, this can be found at the, uh, the antimedia.org uh, website. The result of 25 years of multiculturalism has not been multicultural communities. It has been monocultural communities. Islamic communities are segregated, so writes Ed Hussein, former Muslim extremist. Zionist Israel's PM Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, to soon be indicted on corruption charges. All right, those of you professing Christians who are for Israel and Netanyahu, you need to wake up. Okay, the man is not honest. The man is not a Christian. He's a Zionist and Antichrist. Okay. Um, let's see. Eternal life for the elites. Whole body could be replaced by or upgraded with robot parts by 2070, not counting cloning, genetic engineering, genome alteration, and nanotechnology. That can be found at thesun.co.uk. Marxist Pope puts Catholic Church in an atheistic, communistic cage. A church enslaved by government as God is not a real church. And guess what? That means that the 501c3 churches are not real churches. They're enslaved by the government in the sense that they are in bed with the state by signing these incorporation papers. They are effectively muzzled. They've lost their ecclesiastical jurisdiction and they're not legally allowed to speak out against those things which are not politically um, correct. That is, against abortion, same-sex marriage, homosexuality, the New World Order, the Federal Reserve System and how corrupt it is. How many pastors speak the truth on these matters? No. No, they're just delighted to tell little stories to entertain you, jokes from the pulpit. They gotta keep people putting the money back in the in the in the, in the offering plate every week. You know, they gotta pay their large building uh, mortgages and so on. But are they getting the gospel out? You know, are they truly evangelizing? Are they teaching truth? Biblical truth? No, not too many. They've been compromised, taken over by Satan. Satan has infiltrated their ranks. Um, they've got same-sex marriage. They've got women preachers now, which is contrary to Scripture. Um, okay, so what else do we got? Powerful earthquakes to ravage the Earth in 2018 as planet's rotation slows. That can be found at mirror.co.uk. Pacific Island sinking due to global warming now rising. Scientists warn of an unusually cold sun. Prelude to an ice age? Question mark. The sun is cooling faster than anyone expected. Major earthquakes occur during solar minimums slash global cooling. Now I'm not a scientist. I'm taking this man's word for it. As do pandemics and wars and agricultural commodity booms. Okay. By the way, I expect all these things to increase prior to the second coming of our Lord, in judgment upon an apostate and corrupt world gone mad. Mad because they're basically insane, because they're, they're deep in sin, enslaved to Satan, okay? Remember I said there's only a remnant today that are truly born again. There's a lot of religious people and a lot of professing Christians. That doesn't mean they're truly saved. Just look at the churches that they go to. Listen, they're under a false gospel. They make a false profession. They're false converts. Okay, I was for a long time a false convert. But I believe that the Lord has saved me. How did he save me? A miracle of grace. Okay, He had to bring me low. 
And he uses the law of God to teach us that we are sinful, that we cannot keep his standards, and that we have to flee to him for mercy and grace. You know, that God is sovereign. He can do with us as he pleases. But just to think that you said a prayer, you know, 20 years ago or five years ago, and now you were baptized and joined the church, and you've got some interest in theology and religion, and you've read the Bible once or twice, that doesn't mean you're born again. How is your thought life? Is your heart purified? Do you still have a lot of lust in your heart? Have you told lies? Are you stealing? Are you coveting after other people's goods? Are you honoring your father and mother? You see? If you're breaking the commandments, then you don't love Jesus. Jesus says, if you love me, in John 14, then do what? Break my commandments? No. Keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay? Now, we're not going to keep them perfectly. That's why Jesus must have his imputed righteousness laid to our charge. We must have the imputed righteousness of Christ. And that's what it means to be justified by faith. Being justified by faith, we have what? Peace with God. You see the bridge, the gap has been dissolved. There's no longer, we're no longer at war with our Creator, with, our, with God. That's the peace of God that passes all understanding. That's what you have when you're born again into his kingdom. Um, My peace I give unto you, said Jesus, not as the world gives, give I unto you. But there is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. Although they try to, they try to obtain peace, it's a false peace. And the world wants peace on their terms, but when they're at war with God, there can be no peace. There'll never be worldwide peace, true peace. Um, Because the kingdom of God is at war with the kingdom of Satan. They're diametrically opposed. Uh, Let me get close here and see what this is about. Global markets, February freakout, dollar index. Okay, not sure how to interpret all this. I told you that we're in bubbles. Real estate bubbles, bond bubble, stock market bubble. I don't think we've had these bubbles all at one time before. Yeah, but when, when, the stock, when the bond bubble busts, and that's the biggest market there is right now, then you're going to see the stock market really collapse. Interest rates go up. Anticipating a lower dollar and higher inflation, you're going to see commodities going up. You're going to see gold and silver go up. So I'm telling you right now, position yourself. Don't be heavily invested in the stock market. At least I wouldn't be. Have some gold and silver. Have some survival food. Have some water. If you can live off the grid, that's great. Most people can't because they're tied into cities. And you can't even get your own water rights. I mean, the city buys up the water rights a lot of times. You have to live someplace where you can actually have access to your own water. I mean, if it's on your own land, your own property, you should be able to own the water rights, right? So that's that's the political corruption that we have. All right, now I'm going to read an article here. When we take a hard look at the U- at U.S. collapse, we see a number of so- social pathologies on the rise, strange and bizarre ones, unique ones, singular and gruesome weird ones. They suggest that whatever numbers we use to represent decline, shrinking real incomes, and inequality, and so on, we are in fact grossly underestimating what pundits call the human toll. But which sensible human beings like you and I should simply think of as the overwhelming despair, rage, anxiety of living in a collapsing society. America has had 11 shootings in the last 23 days, which is more than anywhere else in the world, even Afghanistan and Iraq. The phenomenon of regular school shootings appears to be a unique feature of American collapse. It just doesn't happen in any other country, and that is what I mean by social pathologies of collapse, a new, bizarre, terrible disease striking society. Why are American kids killing each other? Why doesn't their society care enough to intervene? Well, probably because those kids have given up on life and their elders have given up on them. Yeah, it's very sad. In many countries in the world, most of Asia and Africa, one can buy all the opioids one wants from any local pharmacy without a prescription. You might suppose then that opioid abuse as a mass epidemic would be a global phenomenon, yet we don't see opioid epidemics anywhere but America. The opioid epidemic mass self-medication with the hardest of hard drugs is again a social pathology of collapse unique to American life. When we see it in global perspective, we get a sense of just how singularly troubled American life really is. 
Why would people abuse opioids in mass unlike anywhere else in the world? They must be living genuinely traumatic and desperate lives. A lot of it has to do with the parents not raising their children in the nurture and, fe and, and fear of the Lord. And of course, of course, the rebellion that these kids experience toward their parents when they see inconsistencies in their life. They're told to do something and live a certain way, but the parents are not good role models, okay? And then the kids join gangs, hang around with their peers, which are bad influences. The Bible says, um, he that walketh with fools shall be what? Destroyed? If you be wise, you must walk with wise people. You know? Uh, do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. The Bible says in Psalm 1, read Psalm 1 and meditate on it. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor, sit, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is what? In the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. So, again, there is a heresy and a, a uh, a fatal error that says that we are no longer to follow the law of God somehow because we're not under the law of God. Yeah, we're not under the condemnation of the law as believers in Christ, but as a principle of obedience, we are to follow the law of God. Not the ceremonial law, but the moral law of God. The Ten Commandments have never been done away. Christ fulfilled the Ten Commandments and he kept the law perfectly. He did what we couldn't do. He did for us what we could not do for ourselves. We can never keep the law of God perfectly. But nevertheless, it is a standard of perfection. It represents the moral perfection of God's character, and we are to esteem it highly and uphold God's law. Men will be judged by God's law. Men and women will be judged by God's law. In no other country I can see do retirees who should have been able to save up enough to live on now, living in their cars in order to find work, just to go on eating before they die. Not even in desperately poor ones, where at least families live together, share resources, and care for one another. This is another pathology of collapse that is unique to America. Utter powerlessness to live with dignity. How did America's elderly end up cheated of dignity? After all, even desperately poor countries have informal social support systems, otherwise known as families and communities. But in America, there is the catastrophic collapse of social bonds. Extreme capitalism has blown apart American society so totally that people cannot even care for one another as much as they do in places like Pakistan and Nigeria. Social bonds, relationships themselves have become unaffordable luxuries, more so now than even in poor countries. This is yet another social pathology unique to American collapse. Costa Ricans now have a higher life expectancy than Americans. A friend of mine's son is in Costa Rica right now doing missionary work. Um, and I asked him, I said, I think that's a pretty good place to live, isn't it? And I think he affirmed that statement. My last pathology, it is one of the soul, not one of the limbs. Americans appear to be quite happy simply watching one another die. In all the ways above, they just don't appear to be too disturbed, moved, or even affected by the four pathologies above. Their kids killing each other, the social bonds collapsing, being powerless to live with dignity, or having to numb the pain of it all away. If these pathologies happened... In any other rich country, even in most poor ones, people would be aghast, shocked, shunned, and certainly moved to make them not happen. But in America, they are well, they are well, not even resigned. They are indifferent, mostly. So my last pathology is a predatory society. A predatory society doesn't just mean oligarchs ripping people off financially. In a truer way, it means people nodding and smiling and going about their everyday business as their neighbors, friends, and colleagues die early deaths in shallow graves. Yeah, have I told you that I've lost a lot of friends over the last five to ten years? Um, maybe it was twelve years, yeah. I mean, shocking, really. Of course, Satan has been let loose, as I pointed out. And um, at least that's what I believe. And, and he's destroyed people's life. He came to kill, rob, and destroy the predator in American society isn't just its super rich, but an invisible and insatiable force. Well, that force is Satan. <laughs> the normalization of what in the rest of the world would have been seen as shameful, historic, generational, moral failures, if not crimes becoming mere mundane or worldly, everyday affairs.